Hey y'all, hey, I'm back for another review of Ruthless. We're on season four, episode 12, entitled The Art of Secrecy. Um, we pick back up with Andrew being caught red-handed, um, setting that fire at Brian's house and dragging his, you know, him and his wife into that house. Um, Andrew is pretty speechless after they show him the video of him inside Brian's house setting the fire. Um, and he doesn't give him anything to work with. Like, mom's the word. He tells them that they... Like, something kind of snapped in the scene, and you kind of see where some in his psyche is snapped. And I, th I think he's pretty much sold out to the record at this point. He tells them that they're the evil government, and he knows because he used to be one of them. Um, he's demanding his lawyer. And then um, he tells them that they need to talk to Malcolm, knowing Malcolm is in the camp. And he's just not giving them any information, letting them know where Malcolm is, because they know that Malcolm is also missing. And, um... Telling them that he needs to, they, they need to talk to Malcolm because he knows that Agent Walton, the uh, the female agent, was sleeping with with Malcolm, and then Malcolm was sleeping with his wife, Brian's wife, everybody's wife, 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 wife. Malcolm has just been knocking them all down, and what he's doing with that is trying to cause dissension amongst the two FBI agents. Um, that's not gonna help his case currently, but I guess it's just the last little knife turn since he won't tell, you know, he won't confirm where Malcolm is. He won't tell them anything about. Um, the Raku and the highest, so this is the last F you to the agents. Let's say. Um Cal Cal Henderson Cal. Let's just go with Cal. Cal's the male agent. She tells Cal, you know, not to believe him. Um, that they tried to hook up once before, but it didn't happen. So giving a little bit of, you know, a little bit of confirmation of what Andrew was saying. I'm just saying. He Andrew also says that she has this habit of sleeping with her superior officers and I don't know what that is about, but we do also know that she is sleeping with Henson and Cal, Henson whatever you want to call them, and um she appears to be the superior agent in this situation as well. So and again, Andrew might be on to something, but sir, you are still a murderer and a cover up -er, so we don't care what you're talking about. Peter and Aaron get to the location and it appears to be the middle of nowhere which is probably just in the middle of nowhere in that town you know that's an hour away and Aaron makes the call on speakerphone of course and he tries to convince his parents you know stop worrying about me we're having fun we're still hiking because they're the nature him and Laura are like the nature type people and um they're outside, you know, they're like the backpackers and the trekkers across the globe or whatever. And he says, listen, we're off in another city. Um, we're having fun. We're fine. Um, he tells them that I might call you back. You know, he said tomorrow. And people was like, mm-mm. And he was like, okay, maybe in a week or two. And um, he tells them that the record was great, but they didn't have to stay. Um, you know, and his mom was like, you need to come home. I need a video chat and see your face. And he's like not giving them much of anything just giving them the, like i'm okay i'm fine i'll call y'all later i'm good like don't worry about it now what his parents should have did uh, uh, what his parents should have done is asked to speak to laura but nobody did um they were probably just so happy to see here that his son was fine but we also know that they're probably not going to ask about laura because a part of him being out there with laura is that they kind of disowned him per se because he married that black woman right and we know he's a black i mean he's a white man so, you know, he, they're probably not even concerned about Laura. They're just concerned about their white privilege son. Okay? I, I said it. All right. Um, finally, finally, they're able to get him off the phone. And Peter is distracted. You know, he takes the battery out the phone and tries to put it in his pocket. He's distracted for about a half a second. And Aaron is able to pick up a, like a big branch and knock him over the head to kind of like, you know, shock him. And, um... He's able to get in the truck and drive away. Peter shoots at the truck and it only kind of hits the back. It doesn't hit Aaron. Um, and Peter is most upset about not the fact that he got away, but that the phone got destroyed in the process. I'm, I'm assuming he wanted to keep that, you know, to get in contact with whoever he wants to contact or whatever that looks like. Or maybe he needs to know he needs he knows he needs to bring that phone back to Daikon in the highest if not, he didn't, he's in trouble. And now that you don't bring, you haven't brought that phone back, but you also not bring Aaron back. So, sir, you might be off the planet as well. But we we're gonna figure something out. Sure, whatever. All right. All of the blue card holders have performed as requested. And let me also add in here that I didn't add in in you know the prior episodes um, review. Marva instructed them. Hey, do not be gentle. Be be the absolute opposite of gentle because she is a traitor and this is her punishment. 
Um, so we don't know what happened in the intermittent time, but we know that they are all done. Complete. Um, and on the other side, you know, Lacey is distraught, you know, which is understandable. And she's ready to end it all. She's just, she cannot do this. Marvel comes back inside. And before she gets back in there, Zane has to clean her tears off and, you know, put this hard exterior back on. Um, cause that's her job. Marvel goes back inside to gloat about all of her plans and um, Zane has to jump back into this role in support of Marva. And she tells Zane that they will try again tomorrow. And Zane tells her, like, mm, no. And Marva's like, well, why, why the hell not? She's like, no, I, I think I think it worked. She might end up pregnant. Let's just give her, you know, a chance to see. Zane also tells her, like, listen, it was more than enough men. Somebody, something worked. And Zane tells Marva that there were 17 men um, that performed on Lacey. And it ain't much that, that that has bothered me <laughs> a little bit. Not much that has moved me about these see this this particular franchise. Let's just say that. It is something about when Marva strapped that girl's legs up to the outside of that thing that pissed Oh, it pissed me off. Like Lacey should have kicked that lady one good time for for my sanity. But also, something about this scene kind of snapped me into the thought and the memory of what people went through when it came to like those breeding camps during like slavery and those times where their sole purpose was to take black men and breed them on those what do you call them breeding farm breeding farms I think that they were called and they specifically were to breed black you know the grant the the prime stock of black men and women to create children that were their only jobs were to work on, you know, to, to be workers on the plantations. It gave, it gave me that. And that was Marva's plan to make Lacey have a baby that is simply going to be used at the work and the will of the Raku, whatever the hell you want to call it, right? It gave me that energy and it, and it pissed me off. And now I am ready for somebody, what I do hope is when Ruth and them, or when some, when they escape, when it all goes to hell, I need Marva to be taken off the map before we leave, because that was just absolutely evil, and it was absolutely unnecessary. And for me, go ahead and kill me, because are you crazy? Just go ahead and take me off the earth. If you don't do it, I'm gonna do it myself. That's that's where I'm at with it. But it just something about it just pissed me off in my in my soul, because like. I don't know. It just reminded me of like the breeding farms and it pissed me off. It pissed me off the whole lot. Moving right along. Ruth has been putting that thing on the highest. She's been putting that thing on him and he is on cloud nine child. Like they are in post, you know, they, they, they just over there booed up essentially. Um, and he expresses his love for her and he's like, you know, Ruth, I love you. And, she, and you know, she's like, mm -hmm. yeah, I love you too. But he also tells her like loving him is dangerous and that he kills those that he loves. Which, we need to explore that because how did you end up in pri prison initially? Like, did you kill your parents? Like, who did you kill? Because he tells her, like, hey, if I feel abandoned, betrayed, left, if I feel anything for people that I love, that I, 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 I unalive them, and their souls are with me forever. And she reminds him, you know, she's looking like, okay, I'd never do that to you, you know, kind of playing it off. He also tells her, like, um... Well, no, she goes and remind him of her pregnancy and the elder mother gave her a pregnancy test and that it came back positive. And um, she tells him that her child's special because it hasn't been passed through any of his enlightened men. And so anybody that his enlightened men has impregnated, he takes on it. He takes on or presumes to be his own children. And um, she tells him, like, listen, our child is the only pure child of the highest. And, um, you know, I guess that is to kind of solidify her as important you know, you know, basically buying her time, like keeping herself alive, you know, because I'm important to you. I'm carrying your only viable seed, all that good stuff. And it's a very smart move. I'll give her that. And then she kind of asked about the other children. It might have been a little bit too soon, in my opinion, but I mean, time is of the essence. No better time like the present, I guess. But she asked about the other children, you know, where did they go? I sent them somewhere special. I had to send them off. Um, when they're going to be back, and he tells her, like, listen, you're asking too many questions and, you know, being being worrisome is just not becoming of you 
he he does not give a clear answer. And so she's walking out of there without the information that she came to get, unfortunately. All right, so Joan tells River that Ruth will not. He She just goes ahead and cuts to the drive. Listen, don't count on Ruth getting them high. It's not going to happen. Her daughter's not back yet, so she, she's not, she not going to be able to be with the shits, just so you're aware. Um, River knows it, too. You know, he's been in a little bit of denial, but he needs to go ahead and admit it to himself that that's tonight ain't the night that we're leaving. Um, Joan tells him that the heist is going to another bank tomorrow, and that's going to put the cash total of the around three milli. So we just need to get through that, and then we'll figure out, you know, we'll figure, we, we'll reconfigure our escape plan after that. Um, River doesn't think that he'll be leaving, um, because of everything that happened today. He doesn't think that the heist is going to be interested in going to the bank because of everything that's going on currently today, tomorrow. He might not be interested, but we'll see. Um, she finally tells River that Aaron is the senator's son. Also tell him that Lilo is not a senator's son because Lilo, remember that is a um, mafia drug kingpin person that, um, can't remember the name, but the boy that Lacey was sleeping with, he ended up killing him because he was talking real trash. Because remember, Lacey's been through a lot. Lacey has also been bartered out to Lilo and his cohorts as a sex slave. She's been trafficked. She's been gang raped. I hope none of these words get me, you know, flagged on YouTube. But these are the words. And a lot of things for the sake of the Raku. So, girl, I'm just saying. I'd be tired, too, if it were me. Anyway, she tells him that he was lying. Lilo was, Lilo was lying about being a senator's son because he wanted to scare cooperation out of the highest. She knew this information, and I don't know who she got it from. Let's just say she got it from Lilo himself. I don't remember ever seeing anybody confirming that, but I guess this is a lie that he told the highest to kind of buy himself some safety, right? And um, it didn't really work because he still ended up, you know, decapitated in the woods. So, great. I love that for Lilo as well because he was a piece of shit. Um, and she knew all of this the whole time, and River's kind of upset that she never told him. And she's like, listen, it wasn't important for you to know, so I ain't told you. Simple. Congratulations. All right. Ruth asks the highest if he's aware that Elder Mother is putting something into his food. Again, it's a lot of information. You got to be, you know, he's very fragile when it comes to, inquis you know, inquisitions and things like that. So you don't already, you know. Gave him the, the revelation that his son is the one true king or whatever it is. You've said that this child is a son. So, you know, you might have to produce a damn son before it's all over with. Um, you're asking about the kids and he ain't told nobody, literally ain't told nobody where them kids at. Um, and then now you're going to ask about Elder Mother and what she's putting in his food. And so she tells him the Elder, Mo Elder Mother is putting something in his food. And I think she needs to know because I think she wants to acquire what that item is so that she can maybe drug him. I don't know. But this has been one of her her hills she's been willing to die on lately as well. You know, insisting on finding out what is in that food. Um, and he says that he is aware of, you know, everybody else's food being, you know, microdosed. But he doesn't believe that that elder mother's putting anything in his food. He thinks that she's just putting healing herbs in her food. Um, he doesn't believe that she would ever do that. Um, he hears voices in his head sometimes. And a doctor once told him that he's bad shit crazy. And that he needs to be on this medication to keep him grounded. And he claimed that he never took that medication a day um, after he got out of jail. And so, you know, he's proven, he, I guess that's proven to him that he ain't crazy. Um... After he got out of prison, he never took that medication ever again. But it says that Marvel was a nurse at the prison that he was in. And when he got out of prison, she quit her job. Um, and he's been with her. He's been with him ever since. Which means she's probably been, you know, giving him medicine and microdosing him ever since. And he's none the damn wiser. I wish that. And then the Rock, who obviously didn't show him that since they show his dumb ass everything else. Whatever. Um. Moving right along, the truck that Aaron has stolen from Peter has now broken down in the middle of no goddamn where. So we now have to deal with that. And for me, I just, I, some of the time, it just pissed me off. Like, keep moving, keep moving, keep moving. He's just wandering around in the middle of the street, not putting more distance between him and Peter. Because we now know that Peter is going to be on a mission to get you. Because he, if he goes back empty-handed, he's also going to get killed. So he needs to find you. So you need to put more distance between y'all instead of standing around looking at the damn truck. But whatever. River asks Ruth what happens, and she claims that he did not want the drugs, um, and she he knows that she didn't even try. And um, so now he doesn't trust her, but she also confirms, like, hey, I don't trust you either because I ain't never heard nothing about no secret boyfriend, and this is our first time hearing about it. And um, 
Yeah. Yeah, so now River's like, listen, you supposed to go get him high. You ain't even gonna try. I'm gonna handle it myself. And and Ruth's like, listen, it's too soon for you to be going back over there. Don't take your ass over there. But that River cannot be swayed none the wiser. So he gonna he think he he thinks his little situation is gonna supersede Ruth's situation and get the job done. But it's not. Spoiler alert. All right. Daikon is in there talking to the heist, and he is damn near begging him to stay the night with him. He want to do something to make him feel good, right? And the heist, he's just, he's not having it. He's just on cloud nine from having been with Ruth. He he wants nothing to do with that. And he reminds Daikon, like, do, do you realize that she's carrying um, my seed? And he tells us that he ain't never been with a woman before, if I'm not mistaken. And he, he gives Daikon a task. And like, hey, you will make sure that she's treated special. Um, he's overjoyed at the fact that, you know, Ruth is carrying his only official seed. And he's just now realizing this. And um, Daikon, is, is, again, he's starting to feel a little bit, little bit more pushed out. Well, more and more pushed out. Um, but there's nothing he could do. You know, he's wanted to kill Ruth for a very long time. But with him being, with her being the fiancé and the impending bride of the highest. And um, his... It, his baby mama like whatever she's a lot of things to him now and so him being able to take her off the map ain't even an option no more ruth insists on knowing what the elder so ruth tells the elder mother hey the highest is hungry and i need to take him his meal so you need to go fix it and so she's standing there and the elder mother's like okay girl shoo shoo i'll take him his food or shoo shoo until i'm done fixing it and she's standing there she's like listen you need to tell me what you're putting in his food Elder mother not having none of it. Um, Daikon showed up to see what what's the hold up? What's going on with the food? What, what's going on? And Daikon relays the message from the highest, telling her, like, hey, he wants you to go lay down. You know, you carrying his seed. He needs you to go to bed, go lay down, get some rest. Told me to bring his food. And so you got it. And so, you know, she has to now go away and let Elder Mother do what she needs to do. And she tells Daikon, like, do you know she putting something in his food? Like, she is, like, on this. Again, this is the hill she's trying to go die on. Um, and I comes like, yeah, I already knew that. It's nothing new. What are you talking about? And he tells her that the heist cannot know that Marva had him and Marva has been conspired all this time to get his prescriptions filled, and she has been putting that food in his medicine because without it, he's a basket case, right? And he has to take the medicine because it, it helps keep him sane, okay? And so now, you know, the pieces are coming together for Ruth. They knew they've been conspiring this whole time for however long they've been with him. Mind you, again, Daikon and Marva have been with him since he's left prison the whole entire time. And that's cool, right? But for me, for me, somebody would, that would like to think logically. For me, that would tell me that I shouldn't be following this goddamn fool because I know if he's unmedicated, he's off his rocker. And this ain't the type of person that I need to... to, to <laughs> That I need to place my life in his hands. But that's just me. Y'all let me know what y'all think. I'm just saying. It don't make sense that y'all know he's damn crazy without these happy pills. And y'all continuing to follow him. But I also, y'all might be too far. Y'all might be too far invested in this thing. And so we just got to go through to get through. Sure. Anyway, River goes to the heist and he is offering all of his services, much like Daikon. And he tells him, you know. That Ruth said he shouldn't. He tells him, like, hey, Ruth told me I don't need to take no drugs tonight, so I'm good. You know, I'm good on that. And the high seems to be trusting Ruth's recommendation over Rivers. So now we got a second person that's going to be feeling pushed out because of Ruth's ability to persuade the highest. Don't know what that's going to lead to in the future, but just say I'll know. I'll note that right here. Daikon sends River coming out of the highest trailer and now he pissed like why would you let him in there he's yelling at Manny and he has an eye he is pissed about the fact that you know now again it's it's him being pushed out like he didn't even want to see me but now River has been able to snake his way into there and I can't even get in there and you know do what makes him feel great it's 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 giving jealousy it's, it's giving that all right Zane has been entrusted with chaining Lacey up in the women's trailer overnight. And as soon as Elder Mother leaves, Lacey is like, listen, I'm, I'm sick of this shit. I'm about to kill everything moving. Like, as soon as I can get loose, it's a wrap. It's a wrap for all y'all. Like, it's really a wrap. Um, and so Laura wakes up. She asking questions because she has been thrown up all night. And so these three are having a conversation. Lacey is trying to warn her that, hey, 
this ain't what you want, player. I know you kind of in it, but this ain't really what you want. Um, and then Lacey tells her, like, listen, and Zane is like trying to trying to calm Lacey down. Lacey's like, no, I'm gonna tell her. Since she here, you know, she new to this game, I'm gonna let her know. The highest has drugged you, and the elder mother, she's microdosing you and us to keep us in this little lucid state. And um Lacey is telling her, like, listen, you need to keep throwing up to get that crap out of your system so that you can get your wits about yourself. You need to not eat or drink anything that, that they're offering you um, because you need to get your mind right. And so she also gives her a little bit of her story. Like, they just got done gang raping me. Like, I need you to calm down because I'm about to get out of here. And if you want to get out of here, you need to calm down. She And so Laura's like, listen, I need to find Aaron. I need to find my husband. So she want to go run out in the middle of the damn compound to find Aaron. And she's like, no, 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 no. Don't do that. That's stupid. You need, first of all, you need to finish getting all that stuff out of your system so that your mind can be clear so you can come up with a plan. And um, tells her, like, listen, you play the game long enough to get that cloud out of your mind so that you can figure out how to find your husband. Then y'all figure out an escape plan. Um, but in the meantime, you need to lay your ass back down, continue throwing up, and figure it out on your own. And so, you know, giving her some words of wisdom um, because Laura had, Laura's the reason that they're there. Laura is the reason that her and Aaron ended up in this situation, so she needs to figure out how to get them out of it. Now, she, unbeknownst to her, Aaron is already out, and um, what I also realized is that he didn't give a damn about coming back to get you because he did knock Peter over the head, and he's headed to the sheriff's department or wherever he's about to go um, for his own sake, but that's also going to be a problem that we'll talk about a little bit later. Um, Joan rolls up on River to see if he still plans to leave because it's 3 a.m. and he's still out there waiting on Peter. Um, and they both know what Ruth had planned for the highest that, you know, she had no plans on getting him drugged. And um, Joan is like, well, where's your mystery man? It's 3 a.m. and he's not here just yet. Um, and then she also says, you know, we also know that Ruth kind of skewed the plan and that the mo you ain't here with the money, so why the hell are you still here? And he tells him, like, listen, I'm just here to tell Peter, you know, that there's been a change in the plan. And, you know, things are changing and that's why I'm here. So you need to go ahead and head out so that he's comfortable coming to me when he does show up. And that is how we end episode 12. Um, again, that's been season 4, episode 12. Things are picking up. You know, we're starting with a whole lot of action. There's a little bit more that's going to happen in episode 13. Again, we know that these are all released on the same day, so we'll jump right back into episode 3. I mean, I'm sorry, episode 13. In the meantime, let me know what you think about episode 12. Like, comment, share, subscribe, or whatever it is that you feel like doing. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.